obviously if a patient is an inpatient, they're sick enough to be in the hospital, um, that's an indication for treatment. Um, but in the outpatient setting, what would be what would be the scenarios to pull the trigger on treating? Um, and you know, Dr. Gersheimer mentioned uh, you know trying to make the diagnosis. Uh, patient might not be symptomatic, but just to use that as as um, you know treatment, not for clinical reasons, but to to diagnose. So, what are, what are some other triggers? Well, you know, that's a hard question. That's one of the a question I'm asked often, and and I, I never give a straight answer um, because I always say it depends, and and it really. Um, you know, I think we'll maybe talk about this a little more, but it really depends on the patient. Yeah. And, you know, for, for someone who uh, works in an office and sits in a chair all day and uh, really doesn't do much physical uh, work or any high-risk activities, mm -hmm. I think a, a, a platelet count of 20 to 25,000 is often quite fine, particularly, really? particularly if they're not bleeding. You know, we see in ITP, I am not know what your experience is, but there's clearly some people who have platelet counts of 40,000 and are real bleeders. And mm -hmm. there's platelet counts of patients I have had who uh, are refractory to all therapies and, and live for years and years and years with a platelet count of 8,000 and never have a bruise. Mm -hmm. So I think this depends, probably this depends on the antibody and where on the platelet it's binding and which receptor it's hitting and inactivating or not. Um, but uh, that's kind of off topic a little bit. But, um, no, not at all. But, uh, but, but I would say that, uh, you know, if I have a younger person who plays, um, you know, intramural hockey league, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, a college student, I mean, who, who plays lacrosse, yeah. Uh, they're probably going to want to have a platelet count of probably around 100,000 if there's a, a lacrosse ball winging by their head at okay. 60 miles an hour. Okay. Um, so, uh, so again, it's, it's totally dependent on the patient, their wishes, their needs, their lifestyle. And so, you know, we talk about bleeding as a, a, a reason to initiate therapy. And we think about bleeding as symptomatic bleeding. But what about bruises, petechiae? I know that it is individual, but how much asymptomatic but present ecchymoses are, do you generally allow, or do you see at that first palatal, you know, petechiae? Do you do you start? Well, I, I do believe that oral bleeding is is a is a high risk for okay. you know. After all, the mouth is part of the GI tract, and, and one of the major major types of bleeding you can experience in ITP among among others is GI bleeding in some cases. Um, so I, I tolerate um, I tolerate some ecchymosis here and there, not all over. Um, again, you have to sit down, in any case with ITP, you have to sit down with the patient and some patients really don't like to have these bruises and right. it, it's, it changes their quality of life and how they feel in public and you know, that is not an unreasonable uh, reason for treating the patient if sure. that's something that's important to them. Yeah. I mean, it's true, ITP patients are so individual and goals and comorbidities and just their lifestyle features. I mean, you, it's hard to compare what you do for one patient versus another patient. Uh, what's what's your, been ex your experience been? So um, one of my favorite patients to talk about was a roofer um, who was <laughs> building, who, who was doing the roof on, um, on, on our, our domed stadium, okay? <laughs> and so, obviously, he was someone, and I, and I think this is true of a lot of people who are contractors, who um, are getting a lot of daily trauma, I want to keep them at higher levels. I think, I think the other thing, um, if, if we're not talking about the, the first treatment, because I also yeah. have to get to know a patient and truly how they understand their own symptoms, um, what their own comfort level is, um, where they bleed. I think platelet mass may be as important as platelet count. In other words, very large platelets may have more function. Mm. Younger platelets may have more function. We don't, you know, but it looks like platelet mass may be more important in bleeding symptoms. But I think you do need, I, I'm, I'm very willing in a patient who requires chronic therapy to kind of dial it down as we go along mm. and to get to lower and lower numbers yeah. 
if they're asymptomatic, yeah. if I know I can trust them to call me. And if they probably get more comfortable. They do. That nothing they bad act. has happened and be willing to tolerate 15. And they're more willing to see that the count isn't normal, yeah. but that's okay.